The stuff came in. Let's see what the stuff is. Today's first package is a card. So it says. But, you know, it looks like a couple of packages of mail-to-mail 10 centimeter DuPont cables. We all know what these are good for. Breadboard connections or going to these headers on Arduino modules and such. So straight into my depleting collection, these will go after this mailbag. And it looks like in this batch, one of them does not have the plastic housing for that connector. No matter, that's why we order millions of things like this and keep them in stock. 40 pieces, 10 centimeter, 2.54 millimeter, DuPont mail to mail wire cable line jumper, one pin to one pin, pin connector. $1.34 from Sunny Findings. And I got two sets of this. But these took 10 weeks to get here. That's a long time. And when I have to scroll back that far in my purchase history, sometimes I see other items I've ordered and I'm not so sure that I've seen them come in. So I really think I should get caught up on opening mail and then do an audit to see how many things did I never receive and how many things are just taking a long time. So we all know what these are. Jumper cables for prototyping on breadboards and modules. This one's called card, but it feels more like a cable and it is. Looks like another USB extension. I recently received these two USB extensions to bring USB ports over from the back of the tower case to the work area so I can get by without a hub. And this is just another one that I bought from a different seller. And it looks identical in quality and construction to the other two. They are probably all coming from the same place. And sometimes I think they're all coming from the same couple of sellers across all of those eBay account names. One piece. Hey, it's not plural. 1.5 milli? No, 1.5 meter. USB 2.0A male to A female data sync extender cord extension cable. One dollar. I paid 99 cents. From Fashion Best Buy. Took four weeks to get here. So I still have to try this out, make sure it works well. I don't plan to do anything high speed. I just really want to be able to maybe program or power an Arduino, plugging this into the computer that's slightly out of reach. So 1.5 meters should give me some local USB ports without a hub. Of course, we have a plastic sheet. You always need a plastic sheet. And this one's in a heavy duty TO220 looking package. So these are taped on each side and survived the trip with no bent pins, but I don't know what they are yet. Come on. Out. Got it. Well now I might have bent the pin on this TYN 1225. And I broke the flat end of my spudger trying to spudge these out of that plastic case. 10 pieces new TYN1225 transistor ST triac. I don't think it's a triac. 25 amp 1200 volt TO220. $1.64 from Top Electronic 1980. Five weeks to get here. This looks like what I got, but this triac thing, let's look this up. TYN 1225 is a 25 amp silicon controlled rectifier, not a triac, but it is a thyristor. The name silicon controlled rectifier is General Electric's trade name for a type of thyristor. And SCRs are unidirectional as opposed to triacs, which are bi-directional. SCRs are mainly used in devices where you want to control high power, possibly with high voltage, such as lamp dimming, power regulators, motor control. This is a 25 amp, 1200 volt peak device. I really wanted something huge. I'm ordering SCRs, triacs, thyristors, low and high power, so Depending what I ever start experimenting with, I just want it to be well prepared and this definitely should be more than adequate. And this one is LED module LED 
and I'm not sure where it's safe to score this, so we're gonna try there. And, well, it's a module. It's a bag in a bag. And it's starting to look like an accelerometer, gyroscope kind of thing. On this side, it says MPU 9265. And on the bottom, they marked off 9250. So serial clock and data, it's an I squared C interface and a whole bunch of other controls. I forget exactly what it does. Time to look it up. MPU 9250 SPI I squared C 9 axis attitude module gyro accelerator magnetometer or magnetometer. Not sure. Sensor from deep learnings, but I paid $1.24 and it took seven weeks to get here. I've already got a module for the MPU 6050, which is six axis gyro accelerometer, but this is a module for the MPU 9250, nine axis gyro accelerometer and compass. So with this motion tracking device, you can sense rotation, acceleration, and magnetism, make a compass. I tried to figure out how to get this 6050 gyro accelerometer working and I did get some stuff up and running but it wasn't working to my satisfaction so I haven't done a video yet. I'm gonna have to work on it then I'm gonna have to do this 9250. This is accurately described as PCF 8574 expander module. So I think I know what's in here. One, two, three. And yes, those are them. So these are in easy tear bags. The good old PCF8574 GPIO expander with address selection, eight IOs and an interrupt, and male and female headers. So you can hook this up very easily to an Arduino or to each other to get more IOs. Just set them as different addresses and talk to whichever board and whichever IO on that board you may be interested in. Turn two pins from I squared C into a whole pile of IOs. Three pieces, PCF8574, IO expansion board, IO expander, I squared C bus evaluation module. Now I did get it from JS Bay 88, but all of this is foolishness. I did not pay shipping. I definitely did not pay $13.08 for these three. These took five weeks to get here, so when I bought them it was $6.26 no shipping for three from this seller. So I don't know how these things really happen. And we've looked at this in several projects before, including a video on how to use these specifically, so we won't go in depth but it uses I squared C, gives you eight IOs out of those two I squared C pins, and you can have eight boards connected together with their own addresses to give you 64 IOs on the one bus, aside from any practical limitations like speed if you are communicating with this many devices and you need to control something quickly. That aside, this is a good way to squeeze more out of limited ports. And of course, the reason I need another three of these GPIO expanders, I only had three to begin with. These tend to get absorbed into projects like this. So I thought it's good to have extras and if I ever run into problems, I've got spares. I know I can use them. And finally, something called line. I don't know what it is but I think I can cut it on this side. I believe hiding in here is an Arduino Nano, which until now I did not own one of. And it is a Nano with the CH340 USB chip, regulator, etc. Looks like USB mini, Atmel 328P, some status LEDs. So it looks like it's all ready to go once I throw some headers on here that are breadboard friendly. Sometimes it's nice to just have a tiny board like this to go on a breadboard and 
go somewhere. Instead of this extra board and DuPont cables board to board and it's harder to carry around. And if I want to make a dedicated project and this board can handle it, that makes a nice standalone project. 5 volt, 16 megahertz, nano, 80 mega, 168 or 328 CH340G USB interface version 3.0 mini USB board cable for Arduino. The 328 version, $3.59 from Good Module. Took five weeks to get here. So the 328 Nano is basically a small Arduino Uno with pretty much the same features. I think it's got a couple more analog inputs. So the logic is five volts. So on this Arduino comparison table, Comparing the UNO against NANO, regular size, mini size, analog inputs though, 6 on the UNO, 8 on the NANO. So we've got our 7219 based matrix LED scrolling sign and YouTube sub counter in operation. Some more DuPont cables that are always running out and always good to have. Another USB extension cable to help me bring tower case ports over without having a hub. At least this is the next best thing to give me local USB, even just to power things like this project. Silicon controlled rectifier. Some gyroscope accelerometer technology. Arduino Nano to make even more projects. And GPIO expanders PCF8574. Most of this stuff is stuff you can never have too much of. As usual, thanks to the Patreon supporters who make all this easier to justify clicking the purchase button for all this stuff. And for everyone else who comes by to check out what's going on. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you have any project ideas I can do with any of this stuff, also let me know. Maybe I'll get a new idea out of what you guys come up with for suggestions. Until next time, I gotta go find somewhere to put all this stuff.